Hello, so today's video is going to be on this, the Smart Geiger. Why it's a Smart Geiger, I don't know. I don't know if it took an IQ test and it was better than the other Geiger counters, or if they just called it that because they thought it was a good name for it because it used as a smartphone, I guess, but that's probably a reason. Anyway, this is a pretty popular thing, um, and I thought I might as well get one as they're not very expensive now, they're about £30. I could plug it into my smartphone, see how the readings compared to other Geiger counters, you know, like proper big chunky Geiger counters, and um, say if it's worth getting or not. So what the Smart Geiger is, is basically, it's this little thing, it plugs into the headphone jack in your phone, it's compatible with basically all modern Android and Apple phones, so no problem getting it to run on a modern smartphone. You start using it, and it basically takes a measurement, um, or it keeps, you know, continuously taking measurements in the settings, you can change that, and it comes up with your number. Now, strange enough, 0.63 micro receiver seems a bit high at the moment, but I think that's probably just because I've got a check source fairly nearby, because um, I'm going to be showing that. And just now I had it sitting on top of my box of radioactive items to see if it, you know, took a higher measurement in the background, and it did. So then I was pretty confident that, you know, it works. So, basically it shows you your counts per minute. Um, counts per minute is basically how a Geiger counter actually works. Um, when they have, you know, like, microceiver doses or um, Ronken doses or whatever, that's kind of... A calibration done on a certain check source guesstimate kind of thing. Um, counts per minute is the real number it will use. Basically, that's every time the Geiger counter, you know, counts a um, radioactive ionization going on in its chamber. Um, that's how it bases the numbers. The more counts going on, the higher the radioactivity is going to be. Um, so what this basically does is it, um, you know, you turn it on, it keeps running, and it counts how many times something enters it. Now, this one was advertised as only doing gamma and x-rays, but I don't know if that would actually be true, because looking at that, I'd assume it's not going to be so thick it's going to stop beta energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a bit of cesium-137, and we're going to hold it against there like that, and we'll go and see how, what happens on the screen, because the number should start shooting up. There we go. Oop. It's noticed it's there. One thing I heard on bad reviews about this was people saying it doesn't really record in real time, like you have to leave it running for five minutes for the numbers to change, and that's evidently not true from what I've been doing from it. It's pretty slow in response to a lot of proper Geiger counters, but it's not something where the number, you know, um, is like really, really slow or anything like that. So, what we should see start happening in a moment is the number shooting up. Why it's not doing that, I don't know. As said, I know these aren't as good as proper Geiger counters, but I don't think they're that bad for like 30 quid, considering... Um, you know, like £30, $30, there are very, very few actual proper Geiger counters you can even get approaching that price range, and for a lot of people I think something that plugs into your smartphone is a bit more appealing. Um, oh, and it's gone to the app screen, I don't know why I want to do that, let's go back to the thing. Um, let's start again, and let's see if it works properly this time. It's a bit annoying that it was working fine before I started doing the video, where I was going to give it a thumbs up and then it's playing up, but there you go. So, what it should be saying now is obviously... It should be counting upwards. Oh yeah, there we go, it's working now. Um, I sh assume because it's on a phone app, you probably have all the problems that phone apps might have with it, you know, because it's not dedicated software for it. But again, I've got a check source right next to it, so it should be going up. So, this is definitely picking up gamma uh, radiation. Whether or not it picks up beta, I'm not sure. We will test that in a moment. Um, but yeah, basically how this works is... You know, it's just a Geiger Muller tube that plugs into your headphone jack on your smartphone and it sends data back to the app, which, you know, in all honesty is all it needs to do. Um, so what we're going to do now is, let me flip this round the other way. So this should block most of the beta radiation coming off and let's see if we get a lower number. Also, something that might be worth pointing out um, I'll try this in a moment, is it might be my phone case is a bit bulky and it's in, you know, like, messing with the contact on this. Um, that wouldn't surprise me, actually. So, in a moment, let's just flip this back round. Does the number start going back up? No, it doesn't seem to be. Right, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to remove my phone from its case and we'll try it again. Because I think that might upset the results slightly. Because I don't know if you know this, but with cases like this, they generally don't let headphone jacks sit really flush to them. So, let me try that. Right, let's try again. As you can see, it's connected to the headphone jack there, and there's nothing getting in the way of it. So, let's let it prepare, uh, let's let it prepare its measurements, and we'll see what happens. So, the count's going up again. 
Why it seems to keep wanting to start at 0 .63, I don't know. I don't know if that was because that was the average number from the last time I had it actually sitting on the check source. 3.77. Now, why is it going up so much? Because I don't have the check source next to it at the moment. And I've checked myself with other Geiger counters, and I'm certainly not radioactive. So what is giving it this high number? That's interesting. Could it be a problem? I think they actually say do this on aeroplane mode, so let's do that. Let's do what they recommend. We'll put it on aeroplane mode, and we'll see how that affects it, because... um. It could be, again, that Wi-Fi signals and things like that mess about with this. Alright, 0 0.31, that's a much better number. Much more what I'd expect to be background, a bit high for background, but it's not an absurd number. So, now that's running like that, let's um, get my check source. And let's put this back on there. And what we should see in a moment is that number going up. Hmm... Why isn't it going up? Still counting the time, but let me just play about with this for a second. I wonder if it does like a pulse every so many seconds, and you have to have a check source near it every time it does the pulse. That would sort of make sense knowing how Geiger counters work, but... <clears throat> okay, at 55 seconds it just did another pulse and the number went up. This is only uh, a four millionth of a gram piece of cesium-137, so it isn't exactly a scary check source. Right, what I'm going to do is, because this isn't very exciting with this, and we want to see if the numbers work a bit more reliably, let me go get the good old box of radioactive items. Um, we'll take lead shielding off, and we'll put it against the unshielded side, and we'll see what sort of numbers it comes up with. So... Not too impressed using a little bit of cesium as a check source, but let's try it with something else. Hopefully there's not too much light reflecting on the screen there. So let's start this again, and I've got it sitting on top of the box, filled with all sorts of things that are mid gamma, lots of things with radium paint on. Oh yeah, see, that was jumping up properly there. There we go. That's more what we should be seeing. So I guess maybe... It's pretty sen like not sensitive, I guess. So if you have like a very low kind of sample size or something, it's not going to do it. But that's more of a number I'd suspect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my other counter that does um, micro sieverts an hour, and I'm going to put it in the same place compared to that one, and we'll see if the numbers correlate with each other. So I'll leave this recording so you can see the numbers jumping up. Right, so here's this one as well. What we're going to do is pop this round here. And we'll see if both of them come up with similar numbers. Right, hopefully, I think annoyingly that one's going to be a bit uh, unreadable, isn't it, with this? So let's put in there. Now, interestingly, while the Smart Geiger is saying 2.8, 2.9 sort of micro sieverts, I'm getting 12 micro sieverts, uh, 14 micro sieverts from the um, Kajo Geiger counter. So that's a pretty big difference in numbers. Um, now, obviously the Kajo one's meant to measure beta energy, but with the case on it and it being outside the ammo box, I don't think it should be getting that, um, you know, really any beta going in that the other Geiger isn't getting. So, it's definitely responding. Now, let's just check that's not in a hotter spot or whatever. So, what we'll do is let's flip these round. So, we'll put him here and this one out here and see how that affects the numbers. Also, I'll point out of all these, the bigger the Geiger Muller tube in them, the more the readings they're going to pick up because the bigger GM tubes obviously have more chance of an ionising particle hitting it. Um, but again, that's still saying 17 or so at the moment. That's saying 3.8. I'm just going to see if that one's going to drop down or go up. Because that's saying 17.56 at the moment. Right, that's going up a bit more now. So 
I guess that's a slightly more radioactive spot there in the box. 1705. Right, what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to do one final test of this. And I want to see how high it can go. And the simple way of doing that is I'm going to put a bit of radium on each side of the Geiger tube. And we will see how much we can stress it. Because what I'll show you is it's definitely going to get more than four or five micro sieverts where I put it in a moment. So what we'll do is we'll do that and we'll see is that a good indicator of if, is this a decent quality Geiger counter or not. Uh, so let's do that now. Right, so what I've done is I've got the probe of this smart Geiger sitting between two test tubes of radium in and watch this. Uh, this is pretty dramatic. If it does what it did before. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so I'm pretty confident it does work in that regard. Um, that's definitely more of the numbers I was expecting. Um, notice the one on the left was saying about 25 just then. Now this one is really shooting up. Let's see if how what it maxes out at. I reckon it does uh, get beta energy from that. Because I don't think that would be giving off in gamma alone that amount of micro sieverts. Yeah, look at that. Is it averaging out now? About 137 to 140? I reckon it is. Although saying that, that might only be getting the gamma um, energy off of it. Because that Kajo one, if I do a similar thing, ends up in like the 400-500 range. I mean, again, it always comes down to the size of the GM tube and everything. But this thing definitely works. Um, yeah, I was a bit sceptical about it to start with, as you probably saw, but it seems to be getting a realistic average here. Let's twist these round a bit and see if it offsets the reading. Because sometimes these you get areas that are a bit hotter in the tubes and other bits. But yeah, um, I'm pretty impressed with that now. It's definitely doing its job now we've got it next to a really strong radiation source. Uh, let's see if we can get make that even stronger by getting a World War II British compass and putting that on top as well. Let's see if it goes up even higher now because it should have even more energy going into that tube now. If it's pushed those other test tubes out of the way slightly, which I think it has done, that might make the reading go down a bit. Let's put this guy here like that, because that looks pretty radiumy. Let's put that one there. You gonna go up now? Yeah. I'd say this definitely seems to be working. Um, how sensitive it is compared to how it should be, I don't know. But will it tell you for £30 if there's ionising radiation about? Certainly. Is it a bit fiddly and all that? Yes. But... You know, I can't really fault it. For £30, as I said, you're going to actually struggle to get even the most basic Geiger counters around that. Where Hype's now selling the Kajo ones in the UK, you can probably get those now for a similarish price to the Smart Geiger. I definitely recommend that one over the Smart Geiger. But for what this is, it's not bad at all, is it? I mean, you know, it tells you if there's scary levels of ionising radiation around. Um, because I've put it next to radium and it's definitely reacting to the radium the way it should. So yeah. Um, smart Geiger, yeah, I don't know if how smart I'd say it is, but it's simple enough, you just literally get the app off of the Play Store for it, um, or, you know, like the Apple Store, install it, plug that into the thing, uh, as said, as they said, it seems to work better if you put your phone in aeroplane mode to use it, um, and everything, but, um, and, you know, don't have a bulky case that gets in the way of the headphone jack, but other than that, yeah, it seems to work fine. And as you know, you can see, you can go, ah, that's a scary level of radiation. And I'm assuming the numbers will keep going up on there. Um, let's just quickly try that before I end the review. Because what I want to see, of course, is um, can I get this to, um, you know, get to really kind of scary levels if I... Let's try one of these aircraft dials, put him over the top as well. Because I want to see, does this max out at a certain number, or does it keep going? Because that's what interests me of a lot of these. I'll tell you what we can do. Let's check if it does beta or not. Let's put the strontium-90 over the top of it.
And yeah, that number's not going up, so it doesn't seem to detect beta at all. Um, or if it does, it's only very, very high energy beta, um, which is accurate to what they said on the thing, you know. Um, I think you can take a screenshot. Oh yeah, screenshot has been saved to your gallery. So um, yeah, it does that. Have I got anything else here that's really high energy? I suppose what I can show is, I could tell you what, I can put this atop of that bit of beta there or whatever. I'm just seeing if there's a way I can actually balance this. So if we put him there like that, it's not going to work is it because I can't get the other test tubes on the other side. Put you there like that, there like that. Is that going to work? Do you reckon? Probably not. I was just seeing if we get that number any higher. Um, let me get the big old plane dial and then put him on top there. Now that number should definitely go up now if it can if it's capable of reading anymore. Um, only thing I'd say is if you're epileptic, it might not be good how it strobes like that. But you've now got gamma coming off the compass, gamma from the two test tubes, um, and gamma from the radium paint from the big flight dial. Uh, it seems like it struggles to go over about 150. But I've found that of a lot of Geiger counters that aren't shielded is when you start getting into higher numbers they do struggle a bit just because, you know, there's nothing to stop um, radioactive fuckery going on with the batteries. But there you go, I still think this is pretty good for what it is. Um, now, let's just uh, test some bits on it. Let's take that away from there. So, ooh, and that was all out of frame, I apologise. But yeah, I think this is going to be a similar thing to a lot of these devices where if you don't have them shielded properly... Um, they are probably going to max out. I mean, if somebody has this app um, and this little smart Geiger and they've got like a really high cobalt 60 or cesium-137 check source, please do a video and see what number it gets to. I'd be very uh, curious about that. Um, but yeah, at least with radium pushed against it, um, you can tell it gets the scary numbers. So it does that job in, you know, good regard, I guess. Um, but yeah, there you go. So the smart Geiger for iPhones and uh, Android phones... For thirty pounds, I don't think it's too bad because it certainly does react to radioactivity. It can be a little bit uh, finicky, but you know, for thirty pounds, what can you really expect? Because that is literally the cheapest sort of prices you can get a Geiger at. Oh, he's gone to one fifty one now. One fifty two, so he's still counting. So it might go a bit higher than one fifty, but you know, um, I don't know if you can get all the way around that circle. That's sort of something I want to see if I can achieve now. Um, you know, most people wouldn't want to do that, but. For some reason I do. But anyway, there you go. The Smart Geiger. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting thing. Um, and I guess I would recommend it. Because, again, the issue is, for the price it comes at, good luck finding many other Geiger counters in that price range. You know, you won't. So, that's my point, really. That, um, you know, for the money it costs, it is actually pretty good. Because, bear in mind, if you want a really good Geiger counter, you're going to normally have to pay hundreds unless you're buying old Milsurp stuff. So, there you go.